Hello, I'm Ahnika, final year PSC PCM student. This presentation is initiated by the Department of Physics, Therishian College, Mysuru. The topic of this presentation is Meteorological Instruments. One of the first things we probably do every morning is look out to see what the weather is like. A bright, sunny day might make us think of going on a picnic. On a rainy day, we might feel lazy to work and crave for something hot and spicy to eat. The weather affects us in many ways. The term weather refers to the day-to-day -day state of the atmosphere. Whereas, the averaging of atmospheric conditions over longer periods of time is termed as climate. That is, the long-term aspect of weather is climate. The question is, what is this field of study called? And how are the different elements of the weather measured? We shall be able to answer these questions by the end of this presentation. The study of the atmosphere, atmospheric phenomena, and atmospheric effects on our weather is called meteorology. Meteorological instruments are the equipments designed to function under natural conditions in any climate zone to measure and record the values of meteorological elements. Thermometer it is a device for measuring the temperature. It is designed to work using the physical properties of matter, that is, thermal expansion of gases, liquids, or solids to determine the current temperature. Thermometer consists of two important parts, one being the sensor in which some physical change occurs with temperature and the other which converts the physical change into numerical value. The next instrument is the barometer, which is meant to measure atmospheric pressure. The huge number of air molecules that form the layers of our atmosphere collectively have a great deal of weight and the rise of warm air and descent of cold air causes the change in the atmospheric pressure. There are different types of barometers, water-based, mercury, aneroid, digital, but mercury barometers are relatively simple. They work by balancing the weight of mercury in the glass tube against the atmospheric pressure, resulting in rise or fall of mercury. The length of the mercury is read for the atmospheric pressure. So, if the mercury indication rises, that means there is high pressure with sinking air which will bring us warm weather. And if the mercury indication is falling, that means we have low pressure with rising air that will bring cold weather. Wind can be described as the movement of air relative to the surface of the earth. By knowing which way that the wind is blowing from, we can pretty accurately predict the weather. Wind speed and direction have numerous impacts on the surface water. These parameters affect rates of evaporation, mixing of surface waters, and the development of storm surges. Wind speed affects aviation and maritime operations. We have different terms to describe how fast the wind is blowing. A gust is a sudden rush of wind. A squall is sudden increase in wind speed lasting for a minute or longer. A gale is a strong, powerful wind. A brief decrease in the strength of the wind is called lull. The direction of wind 
is measured by a wind vane that aligns itself with direction of the wind. And the device used to determine the speed of the wind is called an anemometer. Anemometer can have three or four cups. The force of the wind causes the cups to spin. The spinning rate is proportional to the wind speed. As the wind blows, the cups rotate, making the rod spin. The stronger the wind, the faster the rod spins. And meter counts the number of rotations, which is used to calculate the speed of the wind. In meteorology, precipitation means all liquid and solid water particles that fall from clouds and reach the ground. These particles include drizzle, rain, snow, snow pellets, ice crystals, and hail. In order to measure these, precipitation is classified into liquid precipitation which includes rainfall and solid precipitation which includes snowfall. Rain gauge is an instrument for measuring the liquid precipitation that has fallen in a given time interval. The depth of the collected liquid is measured in millimeters over a specific unit area. Rain gauge consists of a collection container which is placed in an open area. The precipitation is measured in terms of the height of the precipitated water accumulated in the container per given time and is expressed in millimeters. The amount of solid precipitation like snowfall can be measured using the instrument snow gauge. The design of snow gauge is similar to that of rain gauge. A copper catchment container and funnel shaped gauge forms the snow gauge. Once the snow is collected in the container, it is removed and melted in the same container. The melted snow is then transferred to a measuring graduate. While the depth of snow is normally measured in centimeters, the measurement of melted snow, that is the water equivalent, is in millimeters. Another important factor influencing the weather is humidity. Humidity is simply the concentration of water vapor in the air. It indicates the likelihood for precipitation, dew or fog to be present. Temperature and humidity are very closely related. When air is hotter, it can hold more water vapor. Increase in humidity level decreases our body's ability to cool itself through sweating. If the air already contains large amount of water vapor, our sweat will not readily evaporate, so we might feel hotter than the actual temperature. Humidity can be measured in three different ways. Absolute humidity is measured by the mass of water vapor contained in a given volume of air and expressed in gram per cubic meters. Relative humidity is the measure of the amount of moisture in the air compared to the amount of moisture the air can hold and expressed in percentage. Specific humidity is the ratio of water vapor mass to total moist air parcel mass and is expressed in gram per kg. Hygrometer is the device used for detecting and measuring humidity. There are several types of hygrometers, coil, hair tension, capacitive, resistive and many more, whose operation is based on different principles. A common way these devices work is by using a material that attracts moisture. This material changes depending on how hydrated it is. Dry and wet bulb hygrometer is one of the simplest instruments used to measure relative humidity. This type of hygrometer uses two basic mercury thermometers, one with a wet bulb and one with a dry bulb. Evaporation from the water on the wet bulb causes its temperature varying to drop, which shows a lower temperature than the dry bulb. 
relative humidity is then calculated by comparing the reading using a calculation table that compares the temperature given by the dry bulb to the difference in temperature by the two thermometers. The clouds may be defined as visible aggregate of minute particles of water or ice or both in the free air. Clouds are formed as a result of saturation of the air when it is cooled to its dew point, where dew point is the temperature at which water droplets begin to condense. Nephology is the branch of meteorology that studies clouds. The appearance of clouds and the height at which they form is the basis for their classification. The instrument devised to determine the height of the cloud base is called silometer. It is a device that uses laser or other light source to determine the height of the cloud ceiling. Silometers also used to determine the concentration of aerosols in the atmosphere. It is a type of atmospheric lidar. That is, it sends laser pulses and measures the backscattered light. From travel time, the distance of the backscattering object can be determined. Pyranometer It is designed to measure the solar radiation flux density in watt per meter square. Solar radiation is a source of energy which includes visible light as well as non-visible parts of the spectrum. Pyranometer operates based on the measurement of temperature difference between a clear surface and a dark surface. Since clear surface reflects the solar radiation and a dark surface absorbs the solar radiation. Thank you.